Guide Dogs for the Blind Association helps blind and partially sighted people in the United Kingdom by providing them with guide dogs. The charity, though, is desperately short of what they call puppy raisers. They need volunteers to home and train puppies with plenty of support from the charity to train more guide dogs. We're going to meet one of those dogs, Whitney, very shortly, who sat with Stephen, who's almost four months old in the studio. Now, if you're listening on the radio, either get on YouTube and have a little look or online or make sure you watch back later on. It's a very sweet, I think it's a crossbreed. We'll find out more because with me now is Nina from um, the Guide Dogs for the Blind Association. Tell us, first of all, what is a puppy raiser? A puppy raiser is somebody who takes a dog from about seven to eight weeks old, keeps them until they're about 12 to 15 months and gives them a loving home and teaches them all of the basics, um, uh, uh, commands and um, uh, sort of future socialization that they might need in order to become well-rounded life changers in the future. So you get this gorgeous puppy yep. and then you've got to give it back. You do, yes. That is the downside of, of being a, a puppy raiser. But it, they, at that stage, they are ready then to go on to their advanced training to go on and, and change the life of somebody who's blind or partially sighted in the UK. And then you get another puppy. You know, I'm listening to you thinking that is a huge responsibility. I don't want to get this wrong. What if I'm just stressed or tired or life gets in the way? And how do you make sure that you get those training markers down? so that when you get this puppy back, it's geared up to do the job. The, the puppy raisers are provided with the best possible support that we can give them. So we've got the world-class, uh, uh, world-leading trainers in the UK, the best health and welfare support that, that, that they could ask for. Um, so anything and everything that you might need to know about raising a puppy, you've always got that support. You've also got support from other puppy raisers who may live locally to you. So there's a social aspect okay. as well as a peer support aspect. And before we meet Whitney, how much time commitment does it take? Presumably this is a 24-7 commitment. In the early days, certainly it is. Having a new puppy is like having a baby probably for the first five or six weeks. But after that, as they start to grow in, in confidence, you, you still need to be there for them. They still are a fairly full on uh, um, responsibility. Um, but you can start to have a little bit more of your life back once they get a little bit older. OK, well, let's meet Whitney, who's over at the other side of the studio with Stephen. Oh, yes, thank you very much. So Whitney is here along with Jane. I don't know what they call the, the razor or the trainer <laughs> in all of this. The razor. The Probably razor. razor. Now, the, I mean, she's a beautiful girl and she's only four months... She's big for four months old. She is a big girl, yes. But how do you begin to to, to deal with this? Because she's, she's a dog, but ultimately they're... They're sort of not dogs when they're properly trained, are they? They're, they're much more of an actual real tool. They are, and um, there are things that you might do with puppies ordinarily that um, you try not to do with a, a dog that's going to be a guide dog. So she has to learn to be able to settle herself. She has to learn not to get on the furniture. She's not allowed to eat your food, things like that. Um, but actually, it's a, a really good basis for any dog to be trained that way, to be honest. So if you've got dogs of your own, it's a good way to bring them up too. So it's, a, it's, so it's, quite, a, it's quite a lot stricter, but, it is. but they're still a happy animal. Yeah, they're still allowed to be dogs. They're still allowed to play and, and have time when they socialise with other dogs as well. Um, so, yeah, they are, they are indeed, yeah. How, how do you begin to know whether a, a dog is going to be right for this life? I think it starts in their early stages. They have to learn to be calm. They have a certain temperament. So she's my first dog, so um, I'll tell you in a year's time whether or not we manage to get it right for her. But I think it's about keeping calm and then listening and having that engagement with you all of the time. So it's very much about the time that you spend with them, teaching them some basic, basic commands. And, and basic and so, I mean, at, at just a mere four months old, what yep. does she, I mean, I know you're quite good at getting her to lie down. And things, yes. But what, what else does she have to know by this stage? Um, no, at this stage, she's pretty much on track for learning everything she needs to do. So she'll sit and she'll lay down. Um, you can leave her for a little while on a spot and she'll stay there. But um, I don't think she'll do that today. Possibly. No, no, that's not like too much <laughs> excitement here. Yeah, if, if you are watching on the radio, get on yeah. the app, get on YouTube <laughs> and, and have, a, have a look back at this because... She's a beautiful dog in a beautiful guide dog coat yes. as well, which I guess also they have to get used to wearing. Again, yeah, it's also so socialisation, but also getting used to different equipment. And that's a real big part of the training, how you introduce a collar, how you introduce lead walking um, and things like the coat helps prepare them for when they want to wear a harness as they grow older. Yeah, I mean, when you first came in, I was asking you, wasn't I, just what to 
you know, how I can deal with it. Because I know when, with a, a proper working guide dog, of course, as members of the public, yeah. we don't, we don't want to be stroking them and petting them, do we? Um, no, you have to encourage people to be calm with them and not to uh, let them jump up. So that's part of the reason for wearing the coat is so that they, uh, people are aware that they're in training and then have a little bit more respect. And, uh, and even being in an environment like this where she's somewhere totally new, it's, yeah. I mean, studio environments yep. are weird at the best of times, is that good for her to see something totally different? Absolutely, yeah. It's good for her to be introduced to lots of different things. Even coming up in the lift today would be a new experience for her. So they're all things that you do by graduation, introduce her to cars, buses, train journeys, things like that. How do you... I mean, who's best suited to be a raiser? I know, I know they're desperately short of raisers. They want more people to get involved. Yeah. It's got to be very hard, because not only do you have to be very strict, in, in many, I guess, in many respects, but you've also got yeah. to be prepared to let these beautiful animals go. Well, you do... Um, and I think the thing to look at is that you're going to be enabling somebody else to have a really good life with a dog that's going to support them. Um, hopefully you get to make friends with that person too and you keep in contact with the dog. So you still you? you build a relationship with those people. And then, of course, you can always have another puppy. This is true. <laughs> what about Whitney when she moves on from you yeah. at whatever stage that will be? Is she going to miss you? Um, well, I hope so. Um, but I expect that will also be by graduation and we'll be able to still keep in contact and go and see her. But uh, I think dogs are, are quite fickle. We're, we're resource <laughs> centres for them, basically, oh, yeah. as long as they've got food and love and uh, they know that they're secure. I say she's loving the food this morning. Yeah, You've got plenty exactly. of treats. I notice she's nipped your finger a little bit. No, no, bit. I caught oh. it on the, on the way in, yeah. Oh, did you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. It's <laughs> yeah. not your fault, Whitney. It wasn't Winnie's fault, no. She, what is she in terms of... I tell you what, she's got these... I mean, she's. they say if you're on the radio, she's jet black she's absolutely jet black but she's not just a lab is she she's no not, she's, she's got not the a lab soft, at all actually she's, she's got the softest coat yeah she has she's a retriever crossed with a shepherd oh right yeah so she has a, a golden retriever um father and a uh, shepherd mum so, so she's half gold she is half gold <laughs> in there <laughs> there is a gold puppy that's clearly a recessive <laughs> gene isn't it yeah. as, uh, that goes i mean but yeah. she has she has got the softest coat Yes. I've felt she's, on a dog in a long time. Yeah, she's... And it's all going crinkly now. She's getting that retriever wave through it along her back there. Mm. Uh, it's got to be said, you, you're, you're very used to animals, aren't you? You're a, a, a veterinary... Veterinary physiotherapist, physiotherapist. yes. So I'm mm. usually dealing with broken ones. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully we're not going to break this one and keep her nice and fit. And it's really important when they're growing up as puppies that they're not over-exercised and that it's a combination of mental stimulation as well as physical stimulation. So I think, actually, in terms of the guide dog training, it's absolutely a superb way of bringing up a dog um, because they get lots of mental stimulation as well as physical. Who, uh, who can do this, then, as, as a job? I mean, you're an animal expert, in, you know, yeah. professionally, yeah. Um, but what about anyone else who's, who's watching or listening now? So it's definitely something that anyone can do. The guide dog training package that comes with having the puppy is absolutely amazing. It's some of the best training I've seen. It's all very step by step. You can dip back into it and go and look at it. It's all online for people that like using online tools. And you've got access to people that guide and support you through the way. There's other puppy dog raisers that are local to me and I have a development raiser that uh, helps train us. And if we get stuck, we just make a phone call and we get some guidance. Yeah, and I guess it must be extremely rewarding. Now that you, are, you are helping make someone's life much more livable, actually. Yeah, definitely. The thought that you might be enabling somebody to actually um, lead you know, an active life, I think, is a very rewarding process. Well, look, if you want to get involved, guidedogs.org.uk is the email address that you can use to at least look into it. See if, look into it, see if it is something that, that would work for you. Um, Jane, it's a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Whitney. You're the star of the show, sweetheart. You are a beautiful, beautiful girl. I hope you go on to, to really help someone lead a very, very good and healthy and active and fulfilling life. I'm sure you will. It's been a joy to see you both. Thank you very much indeed. Yeah.